Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen of an example of a GIST or gastrointestinal stromal tumour and we are looking at a GIST of the stomach. This is the mucosal surface where we can see the gastric folds or the gastric rugae. And here is the cut surface of the tumour. This is causing ulceration of the overlying mucosa. The tumour appears quite fleshy and tan. We don't see any obvious necrosis or blackish areas of hemorrhage. It appears to be arising from deep to the mucosa and this dark brown layer is the muscularis propria so it could possibly be arising from the muscularis propria. Again here we can see the overlying mucosa which is separate from the tumour. This is the side view where we can see that the mucosa is stretched over the tumour, but again that it is distinct from the tumour, and this is the serosal surface. Let's look at another example of a larger tumour. In this next example of gastric gist, we can also still see that this is below the layer of the mucosa. We can see the mucosa here and over here overlying the tumour. This tumour is larger and this is the 8 cm mark on the scale, so this is more than 10 cm in maximal dimension. Another feature is that we can see these pale geographic areas of necrosis and also these dark areas of hemorrhage, which sometimes can be seen in gists. Let's do a quick recap on gists. Gists are the commonest mesenchymal tumour of the GI tract, they are commonest in the stomach and they can also be found in small bowel as well as the colon and even occasionally outside the bowel in the mesentery, omentum or retroperitoneum. The cell of origin is the interstitial cell of Cajal which is actually the pacemaker cell of the gut responsible for the rhythm of peristalsis. It peaks in late middle age and sometimes it is associated with the carny triad and this usually occurs in younger female patients. The triad consists of gist, paraglioma and pulmonary chondroma, a benign tumour of the lung. Usually the mutations are sporadic, more frequently than germline. Most cases will have a KIT gene mutation and this is a receptor tyrosine kinase and a smaller percentage will have PDGF platelet-derived growth factor receptor alpha mutation, and sometimes in germline cases, and in a small percentage of cases, there may be germline mutations in the SDH complex genes. Clinically, the patients may be asymptomatic, and often the discovery is incidental, perhaps imaging of the abdomen for another reason, and sometimes, as you saw here, there can be erosion or ulceration into the overlying mucosa, giving rise to GI bleeding. And also, if the tumour is large, there may be an abdominal mass. Treatment is complete resection in, of course, resectable cases. And in KIT or PDGFRA mutant gists, tyrosine kinase inhibitors can also be very effective. Grossly, as we saw, they are usually well circumscribed and fleshy, and they do not arise in the mucosa but deep to the mucosa. There may be overlying mucosal ulceration. Microscopically, and there is a separate video on this, we can see spindle cells and often these are arranged in parallel fascicles and sometimes there is nuclear palisading or lining up as well. Some of the gists can also have a more epithelioid appearance so the cells look rounder and they can also be mixed spindle and epithelioid. Very importantly, they are diagnosed by reactivity with CD117 immunohistochemical marker or the antibody as well as DOG1 and they are negative for muscle markers such as Desmin. Prognosis really depends on the site, size and mitotic counts. Generally, gists that occur in the stomach have a better prognosis than in other locations in the GI tract. And as mentioned, there's also a relevant video on microscopy. You can find this in the PathWeb Teacher YouTube channel, as well as in our PathWeb online resource, Virtual Pathology Museum, on the page of the gastric gist specimen. Let's go back to that page. And this virtual pathology specimen is taken from PathWeb, our online pathology resource. 
which includes a virtual pathology museum with more than 800 interactive and annotated specimens. You can also play around with the specimen labels. And there are clinical vignettes as well. We have some gross images, so this is what the more fresh specimen will look like with this very well circumscribed, pale, almost lobulated appearance. And we also have microscopic pictures. And here is where you will find the microscopic talking slide on the appearance of GIST. So in summary, this is an example of a gastric GIST, which is a gastrointestinal stromal tumor, a very well circumscribed, fleshy, tan mass that arises in the wall of the stomach beneath the mucosa, and in this instance, causing gastric ulceration. Thank you.